right, you may be seated. Let's turn in our Bibles to uh, 2 Timothy 3, 1. Say 2 Timothy 3, 1. We've been talking on the subject of overcoming false beliefs about who you are. Who has the right to define who you are? God does. This know also, I want y'all to read along with me. How many have the Bibles today? I want you to read along with me. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. It's saying the last days, and what it's talking about, it means the last of last of days uh, before the great tribulation, before Christ come. In the last days, there will be perilous times. That word perilous means dangerous, treacherous decades. And you can see through the week, as the week passes by, or even the days pass by, you will see dangerous things happening. People are doing all sorts of things. And, uh, but we want to live, learn how to live above that. Let's turn into 2 Corinthians 10, 3. So 2 Corinthians 10, 3. For though we walk in the flesh or walk in this uh, earthly realm and walk in these fleshly bodies, we not, do not war against the flesh. The New Living Translation reads it like this. We are human, but we don't wage war with human plans and methods. We use God's mighty weapons, not merely worthy weapons, to knock down the devil's strongholds. So what we're doing, we've been teaching a series of lessons of knocking down the strongholds of the devil concerning who we are. Because how many know people will make you what they want you to be? Right? Other than what God wants you to be. Now, we uh, last week we talked on uh, your potential in life is directly linked to you knowing who you are. Your possibilities for achievement in life is directly linked to you knowing who you are. It is possible to be in possession of the God kind of life and not know how to experience the benefits of that life. Like having a key to the car but can't find the car. Now we also discussed that doing just a little reviewing because reviewing uh, does what? What does, what does reviewing create in your life? Repetitious information, what does it do? Hmm? That's how you learn, okay? Through what? Repetitious information, okay? The life you live is a matter of choice and not chance. The life you live is a matter of choice. The decisions I make in life are made on the basis of who I believe I am. If I believe I am a wimp, I'm going to be a wimp. If I believe that I'm victorious in life, I will be victorious in life. When I reject the promised land, the consequences are not God's fault. I default back into the wilderness. 
we've dealt with 2 Corinthians, the 30th chapter, and the 15th through the 20th verses. You don't have to turn to it because I say I'm reviewing right. You have a choice of the God kind of life. The Word of God brings illumination that will expose the path of life and death. How many know life is a life of choices? Now, the way, uh, the way you are living today, you made that choice to live that way, didn't you? You, didn't have, you don't have to put it on anybody else. You made the choice to live exactly the way you are living right now. Now, if you don't like the way you're living right now, then don't raise your hand. I'm not going to ask the question. <laughs> But I think that all of us is some things in our life that we just don't like. Mm? Huh? <laughs> but in order to change it, you're going to have to know who you are, get in the wood and constantly renew your mind and wash your mind concerning who you are. Then you're able to make right choices in life. Outside of that, you cannot make the choices that you need to make. And I want to ask Tom over there to do the running at 30, 15. Let you show, just to show you how it's important to make the right choice. Decision making is the right choice. To make right choices is to have, make the right decisions. Do the running at the 30th chapter. We just look over there and uh, God was dealing with Israel. How many know we are spiritual Israel now? And we're going to look at the 15th verse. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. Then it turns around, I like it in the New Living Translation. Now listen, today I am giving you a choice between prosperity and disaster, between life and death. So now I'm giving you a choice. God always gives us a choice. He says, I'm giving you a choice between prosperity and and disaster. How many rather choose prosperity than disaster? Mm -hmm. And he also say, I'm giving you a choice of what? Life or death? Life. Jesus says that the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And then he said, he didn't finish there. He said, I've come that you might have life. And you might have it more abundantly. And that word life means the Zoe kind of life, means Zoe. And Zoe means the God kind of life. Now, he said that you can live on the devil's turf, which is death. Come that you might have life and have it what more abundantly. How many know when God does something, he does it to the extreme. Mm? Uh, he said, a thief comes not what to steal, kill, and what to destroy. So to get rid of all of that and have victory over stealing, killing, and to destroy, Jesus said, wait a minute, I came that you might have life. And then he added to it, not just have just life, but have it more abundantly. Have it to the extreme. Have it more and more and more than enough to have victory over all the circumstances and trials and tests that you may encounter in life. That abundant kind of life. Who would want, who would not want to choose the God kind of life? the Zoe kind of life and walk in it and have victory every day. Amen. 
because uh, you're going to have to have victory every day. Because when I got saved, I found out that uh, the enemy was the real enemy. He was not just something in our imagination or something that's drawn in the comic book with the devil having a red and having a tail and a pitchfork. I found out that that really was a myth. I found out that it really was a, a living devil. And he really talks to your mind. He will talk to your head. The devil been talking to everybody in here to this morning. Everybody. But one thing that you all did this morning that came to church, I'm quite sure he told you, he tried to talk you out of coming here this morning. But how many know that you didn't listen to him? You have victory over the enemy because you made the right choice to come here to hear God's word, which is life. How many didn't want to show up today? Didn't want to come. I'm included. <laughs> the preacher is included. <laughs> now, he tried to talk me out of, come say, but you know, I got to be here. <laughs> See, because I'm the preacher. You get my point? Huh? So, but I didn't listen to him. Right? I could have slept a little longer. Could have looked at, I got the you know, NFL channel. Could have looked what's you know what was happening in the NFL, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but bump all of that. Mm -hmm. I just recorded that, <laughs> and, and and some news that came on about politics and things. My wife wanted to hear that, so I just recorded that. But I could have made the choice to stay at home. Right. And you all said, "Well, wasn't the pastor Norman? And wasn't the sister Norman? Well, you know, I don't know. <laughs> but you all had the what chance to do that also." But how many know that you're here? And since you are here, God is going to give you a word today concerning your circumstances and let you know that you are victorious in this life. Now, the God kind of life is the lifestyle of faith. The Bible said the just shall live by faith. See, I got to live by trusting and relying on God. Because if I don't trust God, I'm going to trust the enemy, I'm going to trust my flesh, or I am going to trust what the world is saying. So I want to learn how to trust God. And trust in God is a process that you learn. If I'm going to trust God, I'm going to have to trust God and leave the realm of the senses and believe what God is saying through his word. The God kind of life is life lived by faith. Let's look at Romans 1.16. It said Romans 1.16. And uh, we'll see... Uh, Confirmation on that. Romans what? 116. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that what? Believeth, had us to faith, to everyone that what? Believeth believeth the gospel to the Jews first and also to the what? Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed by what? Faith. As it is written, let's read it, the just shall live by faith. So your life is a life consistently living by trusting and relying on God. Now, I grant you, there's many things out here that you can trust in. Many people, because there's many voices out here in the world that you really can trust in. 
You can trust in your degree. You can trust in your job. And man, if you're trusting on a job, you already out to lunch. <laughs> because they might shut the doors on you tomorrow without notice. Mm -hmm. Correct? So I can't put my trust and confidence in what? My job. Can't put my trust and confidence in people. I can't put my trust and confidence in you all here. I love you, but I can't trust you. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I might, I, I live by faith. I don't live by uh, the number of people that's in the congregation. I don't live by numbers. I don't live by looking at you all's tithes and offering and basing it on what I'm going to buy or believe God for. Because if I'm going to do that, if I'm going to purchase something, a large item, if I'm going to purchase a new home, I can't trust you and okay. what you're giving. Mm -hmm. I got to trust God who is my source because you might see the house, you understand, and get jealous huh, and run off and stop paying and sowing your time. Then where am I then? That means that, what, I messed up because I was trusting in who? You. And don't have the note. So I can't afford to do that. Mm -hmm. And you can't afford to do that. You get my point? I only trust God and make him my source. Because if you are not in the word and you are walking what? In the flesh, you might, man, you might just book up. Mm? You might be here 15 years and decide to go. You get my point? But it doesn't matter. I've had people to do that. Uh, but the door was still open. Uh, <laughs> and I'm still trusting and relying on God. I don't put my confidence in numbers and who's here and who's not here. Mm -hmm. And base it on a, a big church or a middle-sized church or a small church. I, I, I don't put my confidence in that. My confidence and my source is in God. And if I want, to, if I want something, I'm going to have to trust God for it the same way I did before I even had a church. Mm -hmm. So now you can't be bound. Don't let this be a lesson to you. Don't be bound by people. Mm -hmm. Only be hooked up to the word and you'll have victory every time. Mm -hmm. Every time. <laughs> every time the victory will be yours. Now, we also discussed three choices you have that can change the course of your life. How many want to change the course of your life in some areas? Some areas you're, in your life, you need a mid-course direction of change. You've been walking this way, and it hasn't produced anything. It hasn't produced any manifestations, hasn't produced what you really want it to produce. We all get in that stage mm -hmm. where we won't change. But somehow change never happens. Why? Because the same principles in the word of God are laws in God's word that you have to apply for change. Now, most of you all in here uh, before you got saved, you knew something was wrong. Yeah. You wanted a change. Mm -hmm. And you heard the word, right? Yes, and faith comes by hearing, correct? Right. You heard the word on salvation. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
you who heard that. If I confess the Lord Jesus Christ, believe in my heart, God raised him from the dead. I'm saved, I'm delivered. You heard the word on it. And you made that choice after you heard the word and accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then some of y'all went a little farther and heard the word on being filled with the Holy Spirit. The evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit give up us. So the Holy Spirit gives you power. Power of all the powers of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall hurt you. You heard that. You heard that when I get filled with the Holy Spirit, I receive a prayer language. And I don't need anyone to encourage me because I have a built-in edifier myself. He who prays in an unknown tongue edifies himself. I, don't, I, I really don't understand people after they get filled with the Holy Spirit and hear the word on that, hear that scripture there. Whosoever speaks in an unknown tongue edifies and builds himself up and they're going around looking sad and waiting on somebody else, some person to encourage them. David said, I encouraged myself in the Lord. So I got so down and out that everybody, even the men that was on the battlefield field with me, was talking about me. They said, I got so down and out that I, I said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to encourage. He said, he looked in the mirror, I'm going to encourage myself. Now, you all have more than what David had if you fill with the Spirit. It's not, it ain't no use to you going around. I can tell people when you, 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 when you are not edified. I can look at the countenance on your face because it shows. It'll show all. Show and tell. But those that are edified, I can also tell it. Because you have a same countenance or a same glory that comes upon your countenance that shines above the rest that's not edified. So he says that whosoever pray in an unknown tongue edifies and builds himself up. Then he turn around and tell you don't worry, number one. But in everything, in prayer, and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your prayer request be made known to God and the peace of God. See, you need some what? Peace. When you're going through, baby, you need peace to be activated. And peace is an undisturbed state of mind. Peace is already on the inside of you. When you get born again, that peace is what there, but the peace has to be what? Activated. Your mind is just tripping. You can't sleep. And as much as you like to eat, you can't eat. If they put your favorite food on the table and let you smell it, you just that messed up, you can't eat it. Hmm? <laughs> so he says to what? The peace of God, which passes what? All understanding that bypasses my what? Imagination. No, the enemy works in the imagination realm. He lets you see pictures. He lets you see pictures of failure. He lets you see pictures of defeat. So God says, cast that evil imagination. Cast it away. Give it to God. Number one, stop worrying. And with prayer, that word prayer is an honest, heartfelt prayer. Mm? That means that I'm, I'm going to God and I'm just telling God boldly what I want and what I need. A uh -uh, heartfelt, uh, felt, honest prayer and supplication. And always be thankful that God has heard you. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you that you've heard me. I praise you that you heard me. And then that, that, that supplication prayer is a type of prayer that you're talking out loud. Hmm? 
you getting by yourself, man, you just almost, you're hollering, you know, you, you just, you know, you're on that battlefield. God, God, I need for you to, I need some God, some deliverance here. God, I need you to give me some answers concerning this situation and this problem that I'm in. I've been in this problem a long time. These folks still messing with me by my house, trying to take it. God, I need, I need some answers. God, I've been, Lord, I've been sick. I've been suffering with this old arthritis. And God, I need, I saw God where Jesus bore my sickness, carried my pains, and took the stripes off my back. God, and I'm still running around here with Arthur. Riders. Now that's a what? That's a heartfelt. See, you're telling God, you're really telling God exactly what you want and what you need. See, you're expressing God. You're not coming to God timid. God, I need to be delivered from all this. No, 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 no. It's a heartfelt prayer. The heart type. Prayer is found there over in James when he said the prayers of a righteous man are veiling much. I turned around and looked that up. The man of God was praying for rain to come because it was a drought in the land. And I think it was a drought for three years. So the man of God was praying. It was time God had spoke to him. It's time for rain to come. I'm going to end the drought. Yeah, yeah. So the man of God got on his knees and he had a servant right next to him. And the servant was for confirmation. Mm? He was the errand boy for confirmation. So the, 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 the prophet of God got on his knees and said, Lord, send some rain. Send some rain. You told me that you were going to send the rain. You locked up by, 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 by the words that I spoke that you gave me, locked up heaven from rain, and now you gave a word that rain going to come. So God, send the rain. So he told his servant, go and look. So the servant looked in the sky, and the servant came back, and the servant said, no rain, I don't see nothing. So the prophet got on his knees again and said, Lord, send some rain. You told me it's going to rain. See, he was praying the prayer of intercession, which you can pray over and over and over and over again. God, send that rain. It's a right. Do God what you promise what you're going to do. Hey, has God ever promised you something? Yeah. Uh, and it ain't never manifested yet? Mm, you better take this word here and apply and begin to pray or intercessory prayer. So he prayed and prayed, sent the servant out again. The servant said, no, prophet don't see nothing. So he didn't get discouraged. He turned his face back, got back on his knees and said, God, send some rain. You do what you said you was going to do. It's a drought in the land. Now you told me that you were going to send some rain. So he told his servant, go back. So the servant went back. Then when the servant came back, he told him, the prophet said, well, what did you see? He said, I saw a cloud in the form of a man's hand. So it took three times. It kept him what? What you call focused prayer over and over and over and over again. Then all of a sudden, boom. He got his answer. And then right after that, rain. Rain came. So you go have to put some intercessory prayer and some focused prayer. Prayer of supplication. Honest type prayer. With thanksgiving to God until you see a manifestation.